Hey, YouTube friends and family. How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are doing great. I just thought I'd get on here and share a few thoughts. You know, we got a lot going on. We got a whole lot going on. And most of what's going on, we can't do anything about. Can't do anything. We've got videos, hundreds and hundreds of videos, covering the issues, the problems, the things that we're facing right now. And they're things that we can't do anything about. In my email, I get notification of videos. And sometimes... It's just almost more than I can handle because it's frightening. It actually becomes frightening. We've got radiation, Fukushima, Daiichi, radiation. The entire Pacific is polluted with it. And now they found it in the Atlantic. The fish from the Atlantic Ocean. Radiated. It's in our air. It's in our water. In our soil. In our plants. It's everywhere. We have chemtrails. Some people prefer to still call them contrails. Chemtrails are made up of terrible, terrible chemicals. Along with those chemicals comes clouds that grow and cover our entire sky, blocking out our sun. And then those chemicals fall to the ground through rain. Or they just fall. They come down in the snow. And the chemicals are not healthy. They're not good for humans or any living thing. They're not good for Mother Earth. We have GMOs contaminating our food. We have chemicals galore being poured into our food. We have wood cellulose mashed up into some goo and thrown into our food. Many, many things. We have government pollution. We have wars and rumors of wars and threats of wars. It's just never ending. Every day. Not only do we see the videos that paint this news out for us, and shared, shared by caring people that want us to know. But now we have people copying the videos over and over and over. So that this is just thrown in our face and thrown in our face and thrown in our face. And there's nothing we can do. Oh, the government lied to us here in America. Yeah, bless the president's heart. He got up there and he told us that there was nothing to worry about as far as Fukushima. Radiation wasn't going to hit us. But anybody that had any common sense, that had seen any weather report and knew what a jet stream was, knew that that wasn't true. But whether it was true or not, had he gotten up there and said, Oh my God! Radiation coming from Fukushima through the jet stream in the Pacific Ocean. It's going to hit the West Coast. It's going to go on air. It's Even if he had done that, what would we have done? What could we have done. 
Could we have stopped it? Could we have prevented it doing that, spreading like fire? No. Can we stop the chemtrails? Obviously not. Many groups trying, not even listened to. I've signed so many petitions it isn't even funny. Never even gotten a response. No, nope, can't do anything about it. Oh, and the list, the list just goes on and on and on. You know, militar, militarized police forces, uh, drills in major cities across the United States. Militaries supposed to come in, and we're going to lose our guns, and they're going to come in, and, and they're going to be killing Americans with drones, and what, what can we do? What can we do? I sat down with Hammer. And we were talking, and I said, my goodness, all of these videos, all of it, all this stuff, it's just, people are afraid. I listen to people talking, and they're afraid. I read what they write, and they're angry, and they're upset, and they have every right to be angry. They have every right to be upset. And, of course, they're frightened. And... What can we do? Now, Hammer used to watch the news all the time. And anymore, he thumbs through or rolls through the headlines. And he avoids a lot of it. In fact, he told me for the last three, four months, he's been avoiding it. I asked him why. He said, why not? What can we do about it? Get consumed with it? so that our mood changes, so that we are worried and worried sick, and we forget the importance, we forget the good, we can't see the good through the bad. <laughs> He's a pretty wise guy. He really is. And he's right. I had a comment made on one of my old videos and the person said, um, I understand what you're saying, Ray, but how are we going to help anybody else when we can't help ourselves? How are we going to share with the neighbors if we can't share with ourselves? If we can't take care of ourselves, how can we help anybody else? And I thought, boy, good point. Good point. Except that's not how I see it. We do need to help each other. And we've got to quit looking at all this doom and gloom. All of this stuff that we can't do anything about. What can we do about it? Realistically, what can we do about the chemtrails, about the chem clouds, about the fibers falling, the nanotechnology, the radiation, the fish dying, the animals dying, the birds dying, the uh, sinkholes, the things. What are we going to do about these things? What can we do? Does anybody have a clue? If you have the answer about how we can get rid of radiation in our air, our water, our food, our soil, the Pacific Ocean, the fish, if you have the answer, please put it in my comments. I would love to see it. I really would. What can we do about each other? What can we do for each other. Now that commenter that I was just speaking about said if, if your son is starving, are you going to feed the neighbor's son? No, you're not. The answer is no, you're not. 
But that's not my answer. My answer would be, I would share between the two boys. I would share what I was feeding my son with the other boy. I certainly would. You see, I have a favorite, absolute favorite story from my childhood. The story is the story of Stone Soup. I really believe that we can help each other, but we have to get past the me, me, me. It's not about me. It's not about Hammer. It's about we, us, all of us. We are all in this together. There is nothing we can do about what they have done, whoever they are. We don't know why they're doing it. We speculate. Depopulation? Probably. Can we stop it? No. No. We cannot. For starters, we don't know who is doing it. But what we can do is we can quit worrying about this, this stuff that we cannot change. We can hope that our God, our universal creator, we can hope that the other uh, living beings in this vast, vast universe that have far, far, far higher technology than us have already learned these mistakes and perhaps they can help if they exist. We can hope. Hope must not die. It must not be ignored. We have got to hope. And I am so tired of hearing people come up on videos and say, the end is here. This is it, folks. This is it. You better get your stuff ready, because this is it. And the rapture, and the this, and the that. What about the now? What about the now? What about your neighbor? What about the people that don't think the same as you? What about them? We are all in this together. All of us. Hard times may hit. And it's going to be really, really rough for these people that don't know any better, have not been taught to love each other, to be kind, to be caring, generous. We have to help each other with the things that we can do. We cannot get rid of the chemtrails. We cannot stop harp. We cannot stop the fracking. We cannot stop the nuclear power, the most foolish thing humans have ever done. We cannot get rid of the radiation in our air and in our water and in our plants and in our soil and in, 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 in. It's everywhere. You can't do anything about it. What we can do is build greenhouses and grow what we can grow plant sunflowers. I understand that they clean up the soil. They get rid of radiation, I heard. So we need to plant sunflowers everywhere. We need to plant gardens. We need to do what we can do to ensure that we can help each other. We certainly do. We certainly do. Now for the story. The story of Stone Soup. I don't know how many of you know this story. Perhaps all of you do. But sometimes a refresher is just what we need. Once upon a time, somewhere in post-war Eastern Europe, there was a great famine in which people jealously hoarded whatever food that they could find. 
hiding it even from their friends, family, and neighbors. One day, a wandering soldier came into a village and began, began asking questions as if he planned to stay for the night. Well, he was abruptly told that there's not a bite to eat in the whole province. You might as well just keep on going. Well, he replied, Oh, not to worry. I have everything I need. In fact, I was thinking about making some stone soup to share with all of you in the village. With that, he pulled an iron cauldron from his wagon, filled it with water, and built a fire underneath it. And then, with great ceremony, he reached in and pulled out a pouch, opened it up, and out of the pouch he pulled out a magic stone. He took the stone, rubbed it in his hands, closed his eyes, raised his head, and dropped it down into the water. Well, there were people by this time standing on the edge of the roadway, the street, watching. There were many others that were watching from their windows. They had heard the rumor of food, so they were at the square to find out what this food was. As the soldier sniffed, stirring, stirring, sniffing the broth and licking his lips in anticipation, hunger began to overcome the villagers' skepticism. Ah, the soldier said to himself rather loudly, I do like a tasty stone soup. Of course, stone soup with cabbage. Now that is hard to beat. Soon a villager approached hesitantly, holding a beautiful cabbage that he had retrieved from its hiding place and added it to the pot. Capital! cried the soldier. You know, I once had stone soup with cabbage and just a bit of salt beef as well. Now that was a soup fit for a king. The village butcher managed to find some salt beef and ran over to the soldier and dropped it into the pot. The soldier continued to stir, lifting up the broth and smelling, oh, how delightful. Now if we only had a carrot or two. Out come a woman wearing an apron. She reached down into her pocket and pulled up a handful, five carrots, and dropped them into the, into the soup. Well, I don't need to tell you that everybody began to get excited as the soldiers stirred and stirred the soup. Pretty soon the soup consisted of the stone, the beef, the cabbage, the carrots, potatoes, onions, and mushrooms. It actually turned out to be the most delicious meal for all. It fed everybody in the village. The villagers offered the soldier a great deal of money for that magic stone. 
but he refused to sell. He tucked the stone safely back into its pouch and went on his way the very next day. Now the moral to this story is that by working together with everyone contributing what they can, a greater good is achieved. And friends, that is the truth. The greater good is achieved. Perhaps we need to start doing more videos. Oh, that's the end of the story, by the way. Or is it? We need to start thinking when we do our videos about the effect that it has on the on the feelings of the people that are going to watch those videos. Are we frightening a mother that just gave birth to a new baby into a world that is contaminated with all kinds of dangerous, dangerous things? How about the young father that just got a decent job and is providing for his family has a brand new baby and all of a sudden feels like giving up. How about the people like you and me that just want to love, live, and enjoy life? What about our feelings? Nerves are frayed. They're frayed. People are so concerned. And we have to accept the fact that there is nothing that we can do. It's only by some divine intervention that this mess can change. But what we can do is work together and help each other, and keep our spirits up. Never, ever let hope die. Never let it fade away. Keep the faith, and know that when we raise the energy, anything could happen. Anything. Good can come. We are free to make that happen. Good can come. Even the worst of things can be turned around by those that can and will. Don't lose the hope, friends. Keep it. Keep on smiling. Be kind to each other. Talk nice to each other. And for you Christians that are arguing constantly about God, God is a word that man created. G-O-D. Just a word that man created. Does that mean there is not a God? Not a universal creator? That is not what I'm saying. I am not saying there is not a universal creator. But what we call him, what somebody else calls him, or refers to him as, may not be the same as what you call him, but remember the words we use are created by man, mankind. That's why there are so many different languages, so many different things and beliefs and books, because man has touched them. Man has altered them. Man has created them. Scribes have written them. And believe me, anything that man has touched, look around you is prone to being wrong, destroyed, altered, changed for control. Don't be deceived. What matters is love, caring, being good, helping, sharing, being genuine. 
forgiving, forgiving each other, working together, and quit trying to find fault in one another. Love everybody. They are on their own ladder, facing their own tree. Sometimes their tree's healthy, sometimes it's not. Sometimes they do good things and go up the ladder. Sometimes they do bad and go down. I know I do, and you do too. So back off, be kind, be nice, and let's figure out what we can do to make our now better than it is. We need greenhouses, gardens, neighbors helping neighbors, food. Help each other. Help each other stock up. Help each other can. Help each other grow. Help each other. That's what we got to do. And good is coming. Good is coming. The energy is changing. Please believe that. Great big hugs. Whole bunch of love. And I will catch you guys later. <laughs>